Welcome back to the channel. The painting gnomes were here, so our 2013 view of Gonclave is all ready to go back together. So, let's get that pile over there into here. Where do I start? Ah, of course. So before we go on our cavity waxing fiesta, we're going to discharge the AC system and search for Narnia. Good place for that, engineers because that's where the AC ports are. But luckily, if we find Narnia, uh, that's where the oil filter is also located. So, two birds. Now while the AC machine is doing its thing, we're gonna go ahead and cavity wax everything we repaired. Make sure we get a good coating on anything that we might have welded that disturbed our paint inside. We're not gonna go crazy on this car. It is a Michigan car. It's a little bit too late. Whatever started rusting, is already rusting. So we're not preventing anything. We're just gonna prevent new rust from where we repaired it. Now we're gonna disconnect our rear heater lines. We have some clamps that we're gonna put on there so we don't have to bleed the whole cooling system. We're only gonna lose what's in the back portion here. Those clamps are available in my Amazon store if you want to check them out. I can unbolt our duct work and our heater box falls out. It's missing a few bolts and brackets. We'll unplug it and we missed a bolt in the back. So now we can pull it out of the floor got our AC lines off, our heater lines off. Try not to make a mess in the car. So now we're going to change our housing. Just one half of it is broken. We'll launch all these little clips across the shop so we can play hide and seek later. Pull the bottom piece off. Look, more clips to send across the shop. Unplug the harness and start unbolting this housing. The used housing that I got was from a flood car, so everything was bad, but plastic isn't affected by water. So we just saved what we needed, just that one outer piece that has the brackets on it. We're going to use the rest of our old stuff, blower motor, actuators, heater core, and evaporator core. We're going to take our time taking this gasket off. Just got some two-sided tape on the back of it that holds it onto the housing. So we're just going to peel it off so we can reuse it. Once all the bolts are out, we can pry it apart. And now we can start switching over all of our actuators and blend doors. Some of the blend doors stayed in this side, some went with the other side. Swap over our first actuator. I'll pull our other one off. Bolt it in. And our one door is on that side. The other door is on the other side. And there's what's missing. Apparently it got hit hard enough to crack that. So, I did it wrong. That other blend door, it's going to be a lot easier to just put the tab through the housing and then put the actuator on afterwards instead of trying to line everything up as I'm putting it all together. So I pulled that actuator back off. Then the end of it sticks through. We'll be able to put it on in a second here. The other one, because it was locked open, it was bound up in there. It held the door in the upper housing. And we can bolt our actuator back in here and start bolting our housing together. And then we're going to go search for those clips that we dispersed along the shop floor. And maybe in the lights and the rafters and wherever else they went. Put our harness back in. Plug in our actuators and then clip it into the housing. And we'll put our bottom housing back on. Bolt 
that in. Now we found some clips. And now we're ready to put it back in the enclave. Set it down in there. There's a couple studs on the bottom to line up. And we can put our bolts in the top. Bolt in our ductwork. We'll plug it in. Clip the plug into the housing. And it's all good. We'll bolt in our bottom. We'll bolt in our AC lines. And then plug our heater lines back in. Pull our clamps back off. We'll only have to top off the two quarts or so of antifreeze that we lost. Whatever was in the heater core and the last six inches of those lines. Now we can start throwing our doors back together. We'll put the belt molding on with our belt molding installation tool. Put our door gasket in there. Slide the handle in. Slide it forward and lock it in. Put the cap on. Put the bolt to hold the cap in. Then we'll put our little plug in there to cover up the hole. Put our screws back in our belt molding and our doors back together. Put our door gasket in, just snaps in. Now we'll put our other rear door back together. Same way, gasket first, then the handle, then the cap. Unless you forget, then it goes handle, cap, take it off, put the gasket in, start over. I use that method a lot. Put our belt molding on, tighten our cap down, put our little plug in there, make sure the door works, and we'll tighten our belt molding in. Now we're going to recharge our AC system. We had it vacuuming while we were putting our doors together, so now we can recharge it. Now it's done recharging, we can venture down to Narnia to unplug these fittings. Thanks engineers. On paper it probably looked like a good place to put those. And there it is. There's our oil filter right next to that fitting, which is on the bottom. So I guess if the car was on the lift, you could probably see it, but you don't have any access from the bottom either. So it's not friendly that way either. We'll lay out our carpeting, it's just been folded up. So we'll let it sit there and hopefully take shape again. I'll we'll throw our padding in the back. I can put the little plastic piece around our seat belt in. Then we can slide our seat belt in there. Bolt that in. Install our jack. Slide it down on the tabs and then put the little T screw in there. Put our rear seat belt in. Bolt it in. Now we'll put our seat pillar trim in on the passenger side. On the belt through it. Clip it all in. And we'll snap it in there. And put the one screw in. Close the cap up. And do the same thing on the driver's side. Now we can put the lower quarter trim on. Start with the driver's side. 
about to plug in the cigarette lighter. 12 volt port, whatever you want to call it. Clip it into our upper trim on the C pillar. And start clipping into the quarter. And we'll put our little cargo net hooks on here. Connect our rod for our tailgate. And there's two bolts in the armrest and one in the, I don't even know what this is, clothing hook. Put our armrest in there. We use the belt molding installation tool. It's multi-purpose. Bolt in our cargo hooks. Put our cover back on for our jack. And put the little covers on our cargo hooks. Now we can bolt in our seatbelt on the floor. And we'll bolt in our other seatbelt. And we can put her in a sill plate inside the back door. Again with the belt molding installation tool. Put our D-pillar trim in. Clips into the headliner at the top. And it clips into our lower trim. And there's a couple of clips that go into the pillar itself. I'm going to go ahead and throw in the passenger side lower trim. Clip it into the C-pillar. D-pillar. Put our cargo net hooks on and the caps. And we can put our D-pillar trim back in. Again with the belt rolling installation tool. Does this guy ever use the right tools? We'll pull the gasket out. It's tucked in behind those pieces. It's supposed to be on top. Put our screw back in the D-pillar trim. And we'll put our screw in the armrest and the mystery hook. We use our mystery hook installer. Just rotate it and it locks in there. And we can put our armrest in. And bolt our seatbelt in in the front. We never took the rear one out. On this side anyway. Put in our sill plate. And now we're ready for our workout. Putting these seats in. Heavy awkward things. There's a couple pins in the floor, so we just set it in and set it in the pins. And we can put the bolts in later. Shift it around until it drops in. And start bolting it in. Bolt all our front ones in. Bolt the seat forward. Now we can get to our rears. No need for Loctite. The rest will take care of it for us. Tighten them all down. Now we're going to start with our puzzle. All these pieces. They all look similar. I did keep them separated right and left. So I only have 16 combinations on each side. And there is an order to which they go in. So we'll snap the back pieces in, slide the seats back, and we can snap the front pieces in. Now we can throw the third row in. These seats are much easier. Just drop them in there. There's a couple of hooks in the front that slide into the tabs on the floor. I guess there's tabs on the seat that slide into the hooks on the floor. You get the idea. Push it forward, locks in there. We can run our bolts down and it's installed. Do the other one. It's even easier since it's one third of the size. Throw in our cargo tray. 
Get our seat belt out of the way. There's three bolts in the cargo tray. Now we can put our gasket in on the D pillar. Closes up the gap that's around the hatch. Just a bunch of Christmas trees. Do the other side as well. Now I can put the gasket in the driver's side rear door. More Christmas trees. Snap our sill plate in there. And we'll put our bezel in there for the filler neck. Snap it around the filler neck. And bolt the filler neck in. Push our cap back in there. A little tether. And screw our cap on. Tighten it down to manufacturer specs. Then you put a bumper bracket on the back. And the other one along the side. Put our license plate clips in here and just pop in. And we can start installing our taillights. Just drop them in, screw them in, and plug them in. Same thing on the other side. I'll put the filler in above the license plate. We'll route the wiring harness through and push the grommet into the gate and snap it on there. There's that one plastic clip that'll hold it on. We can go on the inside and bolt it in and plug it in. Now we're ready to put our trim back up. Snap it in there. Aggressively punch it. And we'll put our grab handle in, bolt it in, and put the cover on. It doesn't want to stay on. A couple of push pins in the bottom. And now we can Put our top piece in. Snap it in. We'll snap in our rod for our tailgate for like the fourth time. Should have just left it out. Oh well. Now we can put our rear bumper together. We have a bumper holding gnome helping us out. Put in the absorber. It's also kind of a support. Wiring harness I left attached to it, so we'll clip that in. Plug in all of our parking sensors. You can flip it over. We can snap in our exhaust tips. Slide in on both sides, and there's a couple of screws in there. Do one on the other side. Now we can put our scuff plate in. Smash it in there. And we can put our side moldings on. They clip in there, and there's some metal clips that hold them on on the inside. We'll get those in a second. clips in there. And now we can snap the lower valance on. Clip all the tabs in there. And there's one screw at the end. Persuade it a little bit because it wasn't being nice. screws in the bottom behind the reflectors. Now we can snap our reflectors in. Put a couple more of our little metal clips in that hold the valance on. Now we're ready to put our bumper on. Get it up there. And we'll plug in our harness. 
one harness for everything on the bumper. Blind spot monitors, cross traffic, and parking sensors. You have to line it up with the exhaust tips and you have to line up all the brackets that go underneath the gate and then up the sides of the quarter and under the taillights. So when you got everything in, start using the bumper installation tool. Finally, I knew I took it out for something. Clip it into the clips. And we'll go over and help out the gnome because he forgot his bumper installation tool. Now we can put all our screws in. I can snap our taillights in there. Plug them in. They clip in in the quarter. Snap those in. Then run our two screws in the back. Same thing on the other side. Plugs aren't exactly easy to snap in there. I guess that means they're never going to come apart. At least we can hope. Slide the tail light into the quarter. Snap it in and run our bolts in. We put our little caps on the tail lights, cover up the bolts. Now you put in the sill plate for the bottom of our lift gate. Just clip it in there. Smash it in. And pull the gasket out that we just smashed underneath it. And we can put our cover back on for our little cargo area. Just push the clips in in the front. And that's it. Just got to get them lined up. There we go. So now we put it up on the lift. We can put our rocker moldings back on here. Snap the two of them together and just clip them in. Put our wheel liner in. At least these are plastic, not carpeted. We save the carpeted ones for the trucks because what are the odds those would be going off road? It's more likely this thing will be doing some four wheeling. We want to make it easy to clean. He said with heavy sarcasm. Pop our clips in there, bolt our bumper in. There's a little bit of adjustment on that bumper, so we'll make sure all of our lines are right before we tighten it up. And then we'll screw in the rest of our wheel liner. Now screw the wheel liner into our rocker molding up in the front. And head over to the driver's side to do the same thing. Put our rocker molding on, screw it in, in the front. And we'll put our little front facing mud flap up here. There's a stud on the bottom. Have to line that up. Bolt that in. Then we'll put our little extension on the rocker molding and slip it behind that little mud flap thing. Probably should have put the rocker molding in first. I'm gonna put our wheel liner in. That's filthy. Doesn't this guy clean anything? No, he doesn't need to waste his time because nobody's gonna pay me more money because I clean that part. And it affects the job in no way. Unless you want me to start making videos of me cleaning parts for three hours. 
and then time lapsing everything. I can do that. Put all of our push pins in, then put all our screws in around our wheel liner. Now we can put our wheel opening molding in. Just clips in there. Just have to make sure the wheel liner is on the outside of it. Clip it all in. And we'll put the screws back in it. Do the same thing on the driver's side. Put all the screws back in. And now we can do our oil change. At least they left us a little hole there to get to the oil plug. Put the oil plug back in. Snug it up with our wrench. And really tighten it down with the one inch impact. Then we'll throw the oil back in. I would have showed you the oil filter, but uh, yeah, well you saw where it was before. There ain't no way any camera's gonna see that. I can't even see it. But again, it looked good on paper when they put it there. So now it's time for a brake job. This time I remembered my brake job hammer much quicker. So that's done. Now we're going to put our trim in up above our doors. We did glue the back windows in. Put the trim up in the front. Because once you snap in the top piece, it's really hard to get that bottom piece in there. Put our one screw in it. And we'll put our letters on. And peel off our alignment system and toss it in the pile. Put our door moldings on, peel off the plastic, toss it on the ground. We'll line up the plastic clips and just push it in. The clips line everything up. It's pretty easy to put these in. Push it all on all the way around, make sure it's going to stay on there. We did warm it up because it's kind of cold outside. So we had a heat lamp on it before we put those on. I'm going to put our letters on the tailgate. You can tell I don't like the letters because I have to take breaks in between putting them on. And by brakes, I mean putting door moldings on. So we'll line this one up the same way, snap it on there. If only the engineer that came up with these door moldings had been allowed to design the oil filter placement. I can assure you he was probably promptly fired after he designed something so simple. Hey, look who showed up. Build must be done. Someone's looking for a paycheck. We'll put our tri-shield emblem on. I think I got it right. Make sure it's centered in there and looks straight. Now we'll push it on for the last time. Put our little caps and our screws for the bumper. You probably thought I forgot about those. I knew there was something rattling around in that bucket. So 
So our enclave is all done, back in one piece, all one color. Part of doing rebuilds and making them profitable is knowing what your parts are going to cost before you even start the rebuild. These, you know my subframe was 60 bucks. The wheels are cheap, less than $100. The quarter panels are like 200 bucks. The most expensive part was the rear bumper and the taillights. The rear bumper was 500 bucks. And the reason is the rear bumper and taillights are 13 to 17. The quarter panels and the subframes, all that stuff fits all the way from 08 to 17. So there's a lot more years. So when you know what your parts are gonna cost and you know what you're gonna sell it for, or at least what your competition is selling for, then you can figure out what you need to pay for the car instead of just using your emotions to buy something because you want it. That always leads to overpaying, which seems to be a common problem these days at the auction, making it much harder for me to do my job. Our interior is nice and clean and I actually kind of like this interior. It is black. I like the little plastic wood. Put a couple hundred miles on it. Didn't have any trouble with it yet. Much to the dismay of a lot of the commenters. So I think we're almost done with this build and it's a good thing because my haters tears bottle is pretty full. So is my barrel. Um, if you rebuilt an enclave and you need a haters tears bottle, uh, check out my Teespring store. They're available there. So it looks like there's only one way to make sure that this job really is done, and that's to play everyone's favorite game. So let's find out what's in my console. I don't even have to pull it out. You guys know what it is. It's all the extra bolts. Those are the other ones. It's a little cold out there. I've got to close the window. Let's see what else is in here. Oh, looks like the old owner left some coupons. 50% uh, off hip replacement. And buy one knee, get one half off. I'm getting up there in age. I probably shouldn't throw these out the window. I might need them. We'll hang on to those. Oh. Also left us an ice scraper. We're going to need that. There's some snow coming. Can't wait to use the all-wheel drive and make sure it works. I hope those bolts weren't for that. What else? Oh. They just keep coming back no matter how many times I throw them out the window. That looks like it. So, thanks for watching. And I'll see you soon. And if you were looking to buy this vehicle, head on over to my website. Link's in the description or right there if you want to type it in yourself and uh, go ahead and purchase it if it is still there.